with you in Chanel Cause it's just perfect for your smile Girl, I swear for you, I run the world, I run the mile all right, so as you see, I have this awesome 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser behind me. You may be asking yourself, John, why do you have that FJ Cruiser? Well, let me tell you. I probably shouldn't be allowed on Facebook Marketplace anymore because sometimes you stumble upon some amazing deals. Well, told my wife, hey, I found this amazing 2007 FJ Cruiser not too far from home down in Oceanside. A lovely couple owned it for many years, took really great care of it. The interior is immaculate. It's a 07, 140,000 miles on it. Yes, I know the silver was not my first choice, but when you get thrown a bone, you take it. Well, it is now the new to me, and probably my wife will be driving it a lot because she loves it. I never thought in a million years I would buy an FJ Cruiser. Now, I really love my Toyota Tundra. It is an amazing truck. It is great to bring the family on, tons of space. I can go on and on and on about how much I love my Toyota Tundra. But there are certain trails that I would love to do, but the Tundra is just a little too big. Where the FJ Cruiser has this tiny wheelbase My radio is going off. I'm on the repeater up here. I'm able to talk to my friends down at camp. I'm all the way up here and they're all the way on the other side of the lake. That repeater works really great, especially for it being just a Baofeng radio. And yes, if you're wondering, I am a licensed ham radio operator. So back to why I bought this particular FJ Cruiser. It is a 2007 four wheel drive differential, lockers, A-Track, it's got it all. Super low miles for an 07, 140K. This thing is amazing, especially because it's sat outside. Like, you don't see vehicles that sit outside in this like pristine condition. It does have some slight hazing on the hood, but nothing major, like, it's got a scratch in the back over here, but it's perfect for what I need it for. It's got the BF Goodridge all-terrains, in a 265 Bilstein shocks. And up here on this road, felt great. I was actually incredibly surprised at how well it handled. The short wheelbase and four wheel drive, also this thing turns on a dime. Like th this handles better than my Lexus GX470. I was incredibly impressed. I highly recommend everyone have an FJ Cruiser as a backup vehicle, because this thing is sweet. The FJ is also incredibly capable. I'm not saying the Toyota Tundra is not, but this can get into places you would least expect. The Toyota Tundra, on the other hand, very large, all right? You know, it's got a fat, fat rear end, okay? This thing, tiny rear end, very easy to maneuver. Easy to throw around some trees, tight turns, you name it, she's gonna make it. Well, enough rambling on about how much I really love the new to me FJ Cruiser. Let's go try it out on some trails and then meet up with my friends at camp and get some dinner. And of course, as always, I'm sure the camera's gonna make this look like it's nothing, but these are some pretty deep, some pretty deep ruts. A track kicking in, getting us right up this hill. I highly recommend Skyline Trail at sunset. It's just beautiful up here. We'll try to get a lake shot in a little bit. You got town right down there. View of the lake and the sunset. It's just beautiful up here. All right, best get back to camp. I'm sure they're cooking up some amazing food right now. We came up here to Big Bear to escape the heat and it's been super hot. It's been miserable. I had to escape our homeless encampment of a camp because the sun was just pounding on us. So yesterday we were on the, the ski lift side. Now today we're gonna do a little bit of exploring on the Holcomb Valley side. I got my buddy Constantine with me. He's got a 2003 Mitsubishi Montero. He's also on some KO2s, 
We're both uh, running the pretty much stock sizes, like 265s. But now that we're on the Holcomb side, I wanted to talk about these awesome campsites that are up here. The Big Bear labeled all these like uh, first come first serve sites as yellow post sites. They're amazing sites. I've camped up here a couple times and you're overlooking the entire valley down there. And all you hear is just like coyotes like all night long, just like going like howling back and forth across the valley. It's pretty sweet. So definitely recommend the yellow post. Let's go down and check out the valley. It's probably gonna be really packed though. It's a weekend. I try not to come up here on the weekends. The weekdays are normally pretty nice, but even for it being a weekend and this campsite being open, that's a pretty good sign. A lot of people come up with like actual cars cause they can make it into the valley and there's like actual campgrounds with like bathrooms and you know, reserve spots. They tend to go to those, but the valley just gets cluttered with all the, uh, the van people, the car people. We passed a Prius on the way up here, so. But all right, let's go check out the valley. Made it out here to the Van Dusen cabin. I believe it's an old historic mining cabin. All right, let's go check out the cabin. How How is the cabin? What What did you see? Uh, well, how, was it interesting? Do you see what you see on the outside? Yeah. Does it look the same on the inside? Yeah, except there's more names carved into it. You mean there's not like air conditioning and like lunch buffet or something in there? Well, there is a lazy boy. A lazy boy. <laughs> Animals of the meadow. Some hawks, some bats. Let's see. All right, looks like those thunderstorms might actually be rolling on in. Probably gonna work our way out of the valley now, see what we find on the way out. If we find anything interesting, we'll stop and record it, but I think we're uh, just gonna work our way home now. It's mid-afternoon, it's getting pretty hot still. We really came up here to escape the heat and didn't work. it did not work out. <laughs> 